Big Sills! As I used to say back in the day, it's time to stop lipping and start hitting. This game on Sunday between the 49ers and the Eagles, this thing's good, man. This thing's good. I I, I am prepared for this. I like the shit talking that's going on between the two. A.J. Brown's now telling all Eagle fans, Eagle fans, Eagle fans, you're on alert. Troll Debo Samuel. Who absolutely called, what did he call? James Bradbury trash. Holy shit. This thing like a college football rivalry. It totally, it, it, this is exactly what you want. Nat, thank you very much, man. That's really cool of you. Appreciate you coming aboard here. I know many of you have a ton of options to choose from each and every single day, but you choose to come here. By the way, you're three-point underdogs now in some houses. Woo! How are you a three-point underdog in your 10 and 1? I you're you you've just gone through some of the best teams in the NFL and best quarterbacks, and you're a three-point dog. How's that possible? I don't know if I've ever seen that. Okay. They interviewed Debo and asked if he would change his words about Bradbury. And he says, I regret nothing I said. F you, brother. I don't care. You're trash. Man, I love this shit. I think it takes a lot of Stundines and a lot of cannolis. Okay? And by the way, your cheerleader coach should love this. You know what? If Nick Sirianni doesn't do anything and he allows his guys to talk trash like this throughout the week, I may change my tune on that guy. I, I, I admire the guy who talks trash prior to the game, not after the game. I like the guy that talks shit, writes some checks, and then has to cash him. That's what I like. In my small world, I talked more shit on Oklahoma. And I'm going to post it. Tone, wait till you see this shit. I talked more shit. I said this guy, you guys probably forgot his name, Brian Bosworth. I said he couldn't make our team. This guy's the most overhyped guy in the history of college football. He couldn't make anything. I said that team's overrated. We killed them last year. We're going to kill them again. Headlines in the Miami Herald. Hurricane tackle had... Sooners wondering who he was. Cilio backs his fat mouth up. I wonder if I can bring that up now. I love that kind of stuff. Cilio backs it in the, the headlines. The headlines in the Miami Herald. Cilio backs his big mouth. I got to find this thing here, man. Cilio backs his big mouth. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't believe it. I opened up the newspaper the next day. Jimmy comes walking in, and he shows this to me, and I go, damn, I can't believe that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was right there, in the Miami, right there in the front page of the Miami Herald that it says Cilio backs his big mouth up. And I love that kind of stuff. That's the kind of shit that creates great rivalries and really great football games. I really do love it, man. I really do. Mark Farsetta is going to join us at 5.30. Tone will join us as he always does at 3.30 for the segment. That'll be at 3.30. Also, don't forget, today we start up the program for our Hooters gift certificates. And all of you guys out there, all you have to do, um, email us, dancilioshow at gmail.com. Give us your information. Tone's going to throw a code word out. The entire four hours of the program. We're going to do this all the way till Friday. Monday, we'll name those names on a football Monday. All you have to do is identify it, email us, and you get a shot at winning those gift certificates from our great friends at Hooters. 
I, I, I'm really looking forward to this. By the way, you know what I'm going to do here? We're going to have a little fun. We're going to do matchups. Who has the advantage at every position? Hey, you know, and I, I'm, I was going to do this one second, but I want to do it now. Because I think this is an MVP game for Jalen Hurts. I mean, I do. I think, here, here, get this. He can't lose. He can't lose these next two games. He can lose the Giant game. He can lose the Seahawks game. But he can't lose San Francisco and the Dallas game. He can't. Because the national media is going to overlook many aspects of his game. Don't you, hey, don't you think, don't you think that's the problem here when you're talking about Hurts and being the best player in the game? They overlook many portions of his game. Don't you think that's the problem? You know why? Because they're lazy. Most voters are lazy. And they don't do their due diligence. Senor, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying those Bills and Chiefs games weren't it. That's not going to be. I don't think that's going to be enough. No, I do not. And, hey, Senor, you should add the Cowboy game in there. Not just the Chiefs and Bills. You should also add the Dolphin game in there. I would add those other games. I would add the Cowboys, and I would add, hey, no, I'm just telling you. I know how voters are looking right now at Hertz. Let me let me let me make some points here on this. You really think 4,168 yards passing, 28 touchdowns and 15 picks, 94-9. Quarterback rating, 67-6, is MVP conversation. This has been brewing for almost a year now. Oh, I agree. The fact that AJ engages in trash talking shows you how much they hate each other. I'm with you, Prince. I think Hurts is on pace for like 638 in rushing with with 15 touchdowns. So that's going to come out to like over 40 TDs. When you look at his numbers, that's not going to be enough. My question would be, will numbers or the wins be the metric that Hurts is going to be gauged on? It won't be his numbers. It's got to be the wins. Get this, how would you like to be a coach that as soon as you lost, you lost your job and you were undefeated? Jalen Hurts is in a position, and get this, I know the kid doesn't care about the MVP. Dak said it perfectly today. He goes like this, hey, if I'm in the MVP conversation, that means we're playing well. That's what Jalen probably feels the same way, okay? He probably feels the same way. But if Jalen loses, they're not going to put him into the conversation as the number one guy. I think even if he gets home field advantage, I think he has to beat San Francisco and Dallas. Remember I told you four and one. And then I don't know how you deny him. And if he goes undefeated in that stretch from the Kansas City game on, I, I mean, really, I don't know what metric you would take away from him. His numbers aren't, he's got too many turnovers. And now, get this, you'll take the 15 turnovers with 5,000 passing yards, not with 4,100. That's not going to be enough. 638, so he comes out to about 4,700 yards of total offense and 40 TDs. And he comes out with a, let's just say this, 15 and 2 
that probably gets it done. The 15 and two. His numbers are not going to, his numbers are not good enough. You add the winning in, I think that's the thing that puts him over the top. Because if, here, if Patrick Mahomes ends the season 14 and three, and they have home field advantage, and they have one more loss than you, but he throws for 5,000 yards, he's going to get it. He's going to get it because they don't want to give it to Hurts. Debo is a bum. One 5K season in five years. Yeah, Mark, they use him differently, though, in San Francisco than they use AJ in Philly. He's on jet sweeps. He runs the ball. Keon, I think he should, too. I think it's the pelts he's putting on the wall. I'm with you. No. You run through those court. You run through those quarterbacks. I don't know how you deny him. Unless you start looking at his numbers. He's got high turnovers. He's got a bunch of fumbles and he's got a bunch of INTs. And he doesn't have enough statistics, in my opinion. No 30 TD passing, not over 4,500 yards. Now, there's still a ton of season to be played. He could still up these numbers and lower the INTs. The 67-6 is great. But there's 50 guys that have 67-6. The league is set up for completion percentage to be high today. Okay? Not like it was 15, 20 years ago, where if you were 62%, you probably led the NFL in passing because pass completion percentage. Okay? Stats won't win a Super Bowl for Hurts, but moments and wins will. It's a great take. Who's had the most memorable moments this year? That's a great take. Yeah, but Nat, it's a great take. It's a great take. Because I would say Hertz has had the most memorable moments. The Dallas game, the Kansas City comeback, the Bills comeback. Um, yeah. I, I, I would I would give I would. But how much are the voters looking into that? You know, you're starting to get this conversation about Jalen a little bit here. Okay. Um, Yeah, big. Ask me about news on Shaq Leonard. He's visiting the Cowboys today. And he'll visit the Eagles later in the week. That's a good sign. I'd rather visit the team that I potentially want to go to later than earlier. And then you get your... Assessment. Dallas is only going to sell them uh, glitz and glamour. Eagles sell you winning and advancing your career. What do you want? You're a football player, not a movie star. Now, if we're talking about auditions for a movie, you go to Dallas. But if you're talking about winning games and upping your value as a player, there's only one place to go. You know where that is? Philadelphia. The Cowboys devalue their players once you go there. When you go to Philly, your your value of your car increases. I'm I did just I mean if I'm a get this let me just let me just take this off. And I'll get back to this here in a minute, but let me just take that. If you're a football player and you're evaluating going to Dallas or Philly, and you're Shaq Leonard, this is what you look at. Boy, I'll tell you what, man, a lot of eyeballs will be on me in Dallas because they are always on the Cowboys, no question about it. But if I go to Philadelphia, every guy that goes there, that's a free agent and signs with that team. They they end up increasing the value of their of their career and they lengthen their career and they make money and they get raises when either they stay or leave. And that gives me an opportunity to play maybe three, four more years. Last couple of years for Shaq Leonard has been pretty tough for him in injuries. How'd you like to go to a place where? They may ask you just to be a rotation guy. And you can up your value, get to the NFC title game, potentially win it, get to a Super Bowl, and then go in the open market. You think your value's high? I think it'd be high. I think you got to – when you're making comparisons between the Cowboys and you're making comparisons between the Eagles, I would make this comment to you. I mean, you got to determine whether you're looking at being a football player or whether or not you're looking at wanting to wear the star. I wore the star. 
It's a whole different unit, man, compared to playing in Detroit or Tampa. It was a completely different thing when I played for the Cowboys for a year and a half. Completely different. When I was in Dallas, it was different. They looked at you different everywhere you went. And I was just a football player. I didn't give a shit about that stuff. I, I, I probably was in the wrong place, to be candid with you. But Tom Landry was going to go from the flex to a 34. And they wanted nose guards. Danny Noonan and me were going to be the nose guards. And then Jimmy came in. So, I mean, I was like, you know, being a Cowboy is different. Only one year he passed 1K in total yards from scrimmage. Mark, they use him differently. 800 yards receiving, 700 yards receiving, 400 yards there's a reason he's making $20 million. Mark, you could say whatever you want about him. He's not a conventional wideout. That's not how they use him. Ayuk is the conventional wideout there. Okay? So b- back to this. I think Jalen has to win these next two games to win the MVP award. If he wins these next two games... See, everybody in Philadelphia has already crowned him. Nobody in the nation and nobody that votes has. Just remember that. All our shows, IP, Fanatic, Inquirer, are all, are all saying he won. He hasn't. He's in the running. But he he's nowhere near winning that thing yet. Is he the lead? I'll tell you, for me at least, he is. Okay? But nationally? I can name 10 voters right now on that panel who have Lamar Jackson ahead of him. Do you know that? I talk to these guys all the time. Do you think Jared Bell has Lamar Jackson? Jared Bell goes to Baltimore Raven practices every day. Or do you think he has Jalen Hurts? The Ravens are the number one seed right now. In the AFC, I believe. One or two. I think it's got to do with the amount of games played. They may have played one more game. I I think. Jared Bell doesn't have Jalen Hurts as the number one guy for the MVP. He's got Lamar Jackson. He he doesn't. The guy, Arkash, up in Chicago has Lamar Jackson. All people north of Philly have Lamar Jackson. New York writers have Lamar. It's a fact. It's irritating, isn't it? This guy said on his numbers aren't good enough. The wins is where it's at for him. That's going to be the golden nugget here. He loses. They're going to give it to Dak or Lamar. Or maybe Mahomes, depending on Mahomes and how he finishes the year. I don't care what you want to. Hey. Don't start throwing stats at me because when you look at Jalen's, they're not great. They're they're okay. They're in the middle of the pack. They're in the middle of the pack. The guy in Houston's got better numbers. Winning is what's separating him. I think there's two things that help him in the MVP. You ready? The winning. There's three. The winning, the QBs he's beating, And the 40 touchdowns, potentially. Okay? That's you. Those are... um, I am not saying I don't think he should win it. You're getting me wrong here. 10 and 1. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, every voter has a different metric. They do. 
Because you know what they'll say about Jalen? Media needs the MVP vote. Take it from them. I'll tell you what, Ryan. This is what a lot of voters will do. Well, he's on a loaded team. That's why Nick Sirianni. So wait a minute. Didn't you ever wonder why Nick Sirianni's not the front runner for the coach of the year? He's not. He's nowhere near it. Why? Why do you think Nick Sirianni is not in the conversation for the NFL Coach of the Year award? He's in the conversation, but he he will not win that thing. Why do you think that Nick Sirianni's not in and will not win that award? Not that it matters, but why he will never get that. He's on a great team. They're going to give it to guys like D'Amico Ryans or maybe even Shane Steichen for the job they've done with lesser talented rosters. That's how some voters look at the MVP award. If you took, if you took Jalen Hurts off the Eagles, most people think Sirianni's obnoxious tool bag. I love it though. How you know what's funny? How could I be one of the most obnoxious human beings on the planet not like that guy? I'm still trying to fight myself through that. I, I, I really am. Okay, I'm 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 trying to fight myself through that. Again, ask yourself this. If Jalen Hurts was taken off the Eagles team and another functional quarterback was in there, how many wins would you think in a shitty NFC? I think they're a 9-8 and eight team. They're not spectacular. But the NFC sucks. What are they, nine and eight? Maybe eight and nine? Okay, seven and 10. Between seven and 10, eight and nine, nine and eight, somewhere in there. Okay, you're kind of like that. Okay, I say somewhere in there. I think there's too much talent, Joseph, on your team to be anything worse than that. You take Patrick Mahomes off that Kansas City team. They're picking in the top five. You take Josh Allen off that Bills team. They're picking in the top five. That's, again, that's how some voters, that's their metric. Look, I'm not going to tell you what I told you yesterday and then turn around today and tell you I don't think this kid's the MVP. That's not what I'm saying here. And I don't want you to take it that way. I'm telling you, he's got a still an uphill battle. You know what? Just because you think you earned it doesn't mean you're getting it. You know, Tone and all the all the guys, they're not wrong. When Rob, all the all of Seth, everyone, they're not wrong. But they don't give that award to people because they earned it. It's a popularity contest, too, like the Heisman. I miss the old sills where is the hate? Hey, hang on, man. I, I'm, how can you hate 10 and 1? You want me to make something up? I can't do that because that's lying and I'm not a very good liar. Okay? I'm not a very good liar, so I can't just start. See, I can't. Today, I heard... Skip Bayless again, talking about how lucky the Eagles were. And I ser seriously, they should rename that show the ifs, ands, and buts show instead of undisputed. If this happened, he catches this. If that happened, if they were on the same page, if this was that, if that, I was like this. Yeah, but it didn't happen. That's the difference between the Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys don't wish their luck. They make their luck. The Cowboys wish for luck. Never get it. The Eagles make their luck. Okay? They make their luck. Dude. Right? I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't, hey, Greg, I wasn't a movie star. I was 
I was a football player. I wanted to play football. I didn't give a shit about wearing the star. Didn't matter to me. I I, I revered wearing the Lions helmet and the Bucks helmet just as much as I did the Cowboy. It didn't mean any more to me. But when some people get that Cowboy helmet on, can I tell you this, guys? Some people, you should see it. You should see it. When some people put that Cowboy helmet on, they think they're putting a crown on. And you, you would swear they have a crown on their head. And you're going like this. It ain't that big a deal. You had four wins last year. You had one win Jimmy's first year. But with some people, when they put that Dallas Cowboy hat on and they put that lid on, they think they're putting a crown on. Let me say this to you. Jalen Hurts loses one of these two games or both these games coming up with Dallas and San Francisco. He'll be out of the MVP race. He'll be out of the MVP race. He's so close to it right now. Get this. Here, here. Know this. Last year, you guys felt Jalen Hurts because he missed games. Cost him the MVP. Hurts wins these next two. He could take the rest of the year off. As long as they have home field, and he'll win it. He'll win it. Because he'll have numbers to match the record. Then the most important thing, he'll have home field. What more do you want from a quarterback? And by the way, he'll be so close to validating his contract. Jalen is probably this close to validating that contract. Daniel Jones is out here. Kyler Murray is out here. Mahomes is validated his. Josh Allen's out here. Dude, Justin Herbert, Jalen's right here. He's the closest of any of the $40 million quarterbacks. Lamar too. Lamar too. This year. That's the issue. They're looking at hypotheticals with drops and ref call. Dude, that shit's stupid. And talent has aided him. And the most important thing, let me tell you something. Ace, Jalen Hurts uses his talent. Jalen Hurts has a loaded team. But when Jalen Hurts won that game yesterday or a couple days ago without Lane, that shit's off the table for me. Totally. I'll never bring that up again because he can win without. Lane Johnson, would we not agree outside of uh, Jalen Hurts? Lane Johnson is the most important eagle on the team. Would you Would you say that? That's why that win meant so much to me. Would you guys agree with me? Lane Johnson is the second most important eagle. Right? Would you agree? Look at how the team wobbled. Hey, by the way, I went back and watched Jack Driscoll. He got better every quarter. But a lot of his hands full this week. Okay? I don't think Jason Kelsey's the second most important. I think he's probably 2B. <laughs> Lane's probably second most important eagle. I'll tell you what. You're right in a way because you can't run that. You're not going to be able to run the brotherly shove without Jason. I don't know. Okay. You said that, Sills. You wanted to see Jalen play without Lane. He proved it. Absolutely. Absolutely so. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Kelsey second. You could probably go Kelsey or Lane. All right. I want to do something here. I want to compare per position. Niners versus Eagles. Defense versus offense. I would, and by the way, my top 10 NFL teams, quarterbacks, MVP race. We'll look at that and also week 13. Would we agree that these are the two best rosters in the National Football League? Going into Sunday. Do, do we agree? 
This, these are the two best rosters in the National Football League. I think they are. Okay? I think they are. I'd be curious to see their record this season if you remove Jake Elliott from the equation. He's a great kicker. Okay? He's a great kicker. You got two of the best rosters in the league. I think the best. And I'm going to start with the offenses. 49ers versus the Eagles. And let's start at quarterback. Brock Purdy versus Jalen Hurts. Let's let let's ask some questions fairly here. Is Brock Purdy even the best player in his offensive huddle? No. No. Is Jalen Hurts? He's the most important. Is is he better than Lane and Kelsey and AJ? He's in the discussion. Let's just start there when it comes to how you look at him in the pecking order of the offensive guys. Like, that offense doesn't roll without him. We saw a year ago two other quarterbacks take that offense, manipulated a little bit by Kyle Shanahan, and they won a ton of games. Garoppolo, um, Trey Lance, they still won. You see, here, here's the difference, in my opinion, between San Francisco and Philadelphia. That offense is Kyle Shanahan, not Brock Purdy. The offense in Philly is Jalen Hurts and Jalen Hurts alone. Do we agree on that? It is more about Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco than it is about Brock Purdy in San Francisco. So only Purdy and Lamar can have stacked teams. You're, you're, you're taking this out of context, Ryan. You completely took it out of context. I think what Hurts is doing, he's the MVP. Others are not going to look at it like that. Okay? Don't get bent. I'm not saying that. Kyle Shanahan is the face of the 49er offense. Jalen Hurts is the face of the Eagle offense. Nobody can run that. You got a guy who's in Indianapolis right now who's playing playoff football in Gardner Minshew. He couldn't run it. Okay? So right there, that dynamic, to me, Kyle Shanahan calls plays he feels that the game goes. Jalen, they call plays for Jalen Hurts. And there's more control in San Francisco over Purdy than there is with Hurts. What am I saying? Jalen's got more freedom to do what he wants with his offense than Purdy does. Fair? I'd say the 49ers are every bit as talented, more on defense, but I believe they are more of a finesse team. I don't believe that nasty. They're a finesse team. I do not. They're not a finesse team. There's nothing finesse about that. Why? Because of McCaffrey? I'm talking about the media MB. Okay, got you, Ryan. I got you. Thank you, brother. I think Jalen has more autonomy than Brock Purdy does. I think there's more control of Brock Purdy. What does that mean? That's why comebacks are more proficient. And get this, that's why Purdy can't deal when pieces of the puzzle are not on the board. Jalen can, because he, you know why? He adapts, he overcomes, okay? That's why he keeps his composure. He's not on a leash. Brock Purdy's on a leash. Dominique, what's up? Thanks for coming aboard. 
Do you agree? He's more on a leash than what Hurts is. That's Jalen's offense. That's Kyle Shanahan's offense. So why is that important? Well, two minutes? Two minutes, Kyle Shanahan has to win that game with player performance. Two minutes left in a game, Jalen Hurts has to win a ball game with his mind, his field presence, and his leadership. You're developing more of a leader in Hurts in a game, in a Jalen Hurts offensive manager of his own offense. You're developing Hurts better in Philly than you are Purdy in San Francisco. And that's why you see Jalen win games when he sucks. Purdy can't do that. He can't lead you in a comeback against Cleveland and a Temple quarterback. He can't because he's not seeing the game. Kyle Shanahan sees the game. Hurts is so far ahead of Purdy as a field manager and as a field presence. It's night and day. It's really not close. Advantage, Philly. There's nothing you can explain to me that Brock Purdy is in a two-minute drill going to audible out of a play that Kyle Shanahan runs for him. Hurts will, or he'll take off. It's totally Jalen Hurts. It's not close. Just in field presence. Then you add the intangibles and all that other stuff. Brock Purdy slowly being brought along. Jalen Hurts is skyrocketing in his development. That's how I see it. Christian McCaffrey versus DeAndre Swift. Um, Christian McCaffrey's having an MVP season. Swift has been an upgrade. He's been an upgrade in what they want to do. He fits more with what they want to do. What's up, Chad? Thanks for coming aboard. He fits with what they want, and he's he's fitting in. By the way, I think he's really benefited coming out of the bye. But McCaffrey is just electric. He's an MVP candidate, as I said. He's got great hands. He's tougher than you think. Injury prone. But everything you want in the back, and this is why Howie was going to make a move for him, but Howie didn't want to give up the King's Ransom and the treasure chest that San Francisco did. How he made a call to Carolina. He wanted him last year. And that's why they went and got basically DeAndre Swift because he kind of resembles what McCaffrey does. McCaffrey's the golden goose how he wanted. So he landed on Swift. Fourth rounder, not a lot. He's totally outlived that fourth round pick. I mean, he's going to make a ton of money in the offseason. It'd be interesting to see what the Eagles do. I don't think you're going to be able to bring him back because there's going to be a lot of suitors for him. I'd like to see him in Buffalo, uh, someplace like that, maybe Kansas City, because he's going to have a giant market. And he, he's a free agent at the end of this year. And the Eagles don't pay at that position. That's just what you do. A win on the Tush Push NFL will ban it next day. Hey, hey. If they win the Super Bowl on the tush push, they'll ban it the next day. Okay? Um, Andreas, th that's probably true. No, no, no. Hey, Devin, I don't think Swift is that far behind either. But McCaffrey's just, he's too much. He's, I mean, look across the board. Personally, I think he's the best player in that huddle. Advantage San Francisco. But... Not by a bunch. Brandon Ayuk versus Devontae Smith. Um, it, 
It's close. Ayuk has, without a doubt, improved his game. But what Devontae did in that Bills shit weather, tough football game, must win Bills, he played so tough in that game. I think he runs by a smidge better routes, Devontae. I think he's got, by a smidge, better hands. James Cook is good in Buffalo. They just need some coaches. That's probably too, too, Dirty D. Um, It's not Smitty all day, but I'm going with Smitty. And I'm going to take Devontae Smith over Ayuk. Ayuk's a great player. Look how close this is. Advantage. Philly. Debo Samuel versus A.J. Brown. This is a hard one to evaluate. Who's the better receiver? A.J. Who does more for the offense? Debo. How do you... It's like basically talk... Debo is the wide receiver version of Jalen Hurts. How do you quantify his value on the offense on moving the chains? Versus a guy who's just one-dimensional in A.J. Brown. He's a receiver. Is he ex- exceptional? Absolutely. Is he the best in the game this year? I'd take him over Tyreek. I would. But who's value to the offense moving the sticks? And Keon's like you're reaching. Well, there's a reason he's making $20 million, guy. It's not because he's a, a suck-ass guy out there. He, he, he's making enormous money because of value he brings to the offense. AJ is, without a doubt, having a dominant season. Advantage? Philly. The number three receiver, Jennings and Julio Jones. San Francisco gets the advantage in the three hole here. Jennings is pretty good. Zacchaeus, too, brings that thing close. Debo's a wide receiver that could be a running back. McCaffrey is a running back that could be a receiver. That's why it's hard to evaluate San Francisco's personnel. Okay? Because they're asked to do more. Third wide receiver goes to San Francisco. Tight end. George Kittle's better than Dallas Goddard. He's a better player. Plus, Goddard's coming off an injury. And he's injury prone. Um, Kittle's a better player. Kittle's a better blocker. Kittle blocks in, in the run. They're very similar. I think Kittle's got better hands. Advantage? San Francisco. Left tackle. Trent Williams, Jordan Mulata. You know I love Mulata. He's no Trent Williams. Trent Williams going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Advantage, San Francisco. Left guard. Aaron Banks versus Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson in my opinion, is emerging as one of the best left guards in the National Football League. I'm a huge fan of the guy. And I'm going Landon Dickerson. Advantage, Philly. Center, Brendel, Jack Brendel. Heck of a player. No Jason Kelsey. Advantage, Philly. Right guard, Spencer Buford versus Cam Jurgens. Advantage, San Francisco. Right tackle, Colton McKivitz versus Lane. Not a conversation. Advantage, Philly. So, 
You add it up. Six for Philly. Five for San Francisco. And the most notable, the quarterback is on the San Francisco side. Now, play calling. Kyle Shanahan versus Brian Johnson. It's not close. Kyle Shanahan. And you guys will go like this. Well, he blew a Super Bowl. And they lost another Super Bowl with him. Yeah, I know. Before you answer that and add something else in, you got too, either too many mouths in the room or too much inconsistency in your play calling. You got to pick one. Okay? You got to pick one. And let's take a look at this. What, 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 is, what are they right now? Are they 7-3? and three? What were they last year? 13 and three or 13 and four. They're 20 and seven in the last two years. Also, they're not horrible. And I think Purdy's lost one ball game. Oh no, two ball games in the regular season. Okay. Their corners are just dudes. Ours haven't played great, but they're you're 27th in pass defense. Before you start crowing and we get over there, you're one of the worst pass defenses in the National Football League. And you're going to take credit and try to come and try to somehow compromise the fact that you're one of the worst pass defenses in the National Football League and the worst on third down? I mean, you're like 30th in giving up third downs. Before you start barking about your corners, I'd hang in there. Did you just say Purdy's better than Hurts? I'm not answering that. Here is the defensive side. This is interesting. There's a lot of talent that is going to be on the field Sunday. What are we ranked in points scored? I don't know. I know teams, I know this, teams right now, they love throwing the ball against you. Everyone has a field day on the Eagle secondary. Everyone. Everyone. Left defensive end, Chase Young versus Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham had a good game. He's picked it up a bit. Chase Young has been spectacular since he's gotten to San Francisco. This may have been the toughest one because I don't think Brandon Graham has outplayed Chase Young this year. And I'm not just doing it for the Bills game. Okay, left defensive end, advantage San Francisco, Chase Young. Left defensive tackle, Armstead, Eric Armstead versus Jordan Davis. I never thought I'd say this. Jordan Davis, Philly. How about this one coming up here? Javon Hardgrave versus Jalen Carter. Hardgrave's had a great season. By the way, he's playing better against the run. Why? Because of the guy behind him. Right defensive tackle, Javon Hardgrave versus Jalen Carter. I got Jalen Carter. Advantage Philly. Nick Boza, Josh Sweat, right DE. 
as good as Josh Sweat is. Nick Bowes all day. Advantage San Francisco. The Will, Dre Greenlaw versus Ellis or Cunningham. Greenlaw, advantage San Francisco. The Mike, best in the game, Fred Warner. Now, in last year's NFC Championship game, Jalen Hurts made that guy look slow. But Fred Warner's the best Mike linebacker in pro football. Advantage, San Francisco. Strong side linebacker, Orrin Banks versus Hassan Reddick. Advantage, Philadelphia. Left corner, Ward versus Bradbury. <clears throat> San Francisco's great in pass defense. The Eagles are horrible. And you want me to give the advantage to Bradbury? Why would I give the advantage to Bradbury when San Francisco is spectacular in pass defense? Why? Because you're paying them? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? That's great, Isaiah. I'm talking about your corners now. And I'm not comparing with the Panthers. I'm comparing right now the game you're playing. Okay? I do think the advantage is Bradbury. I think the scheme he's in and the safeties are killing him and the linebackers are killing him. I think those corners are on an island this year. And I think they've played as well as they can. The linebackers are not good enough, and your safeties aren't good enough. And that's why those two corners don't look like they did a year ago. I would still take him, Bradbury, over Ward. What good quarterback winners play yet? I would still take Bradbury. Advantage, Philly. Strong safety, Brown versus Kevin Byard. This is tough because Byard came on and had a great game against – I thought he played great against the Bills. A couple times, Josh Allen's going to get his, dude. He is. But do I look at Brown, Jari Brown versus Kevin Byard and go, Jari Brown is better? No. Advantage, Philly. Another factor is that our secondary has been revolving door this season, haven't had a consistent lineup all year. That's why I... Gibson versus Blankenship. Gibson all day. He's a better free safety than Reed Blankenship. Advantage, San Francisco. Right cornerback. Lenore versus Slay. Lenore versus Slay. You can't just dismiss the fact that San Francisco's playing so well in the secondary, but that's because they're front seven is playing so well. And it's such an advantage when your front seven's playing like that. You don't have a front seven in Philly. you got a front four. Your linebackers kind of help you, but not a lot. 
Okay. Yeah, well, what's his name? Look, somebody goes, Seals is faking that this is tough. San Francisco is ranked – they're one of the best teams in pass defense. You're not. And you want to get extra credit for the name on the back of the jersey? Where do you come up with that? That's not looking at this right. You're, 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 you suck at giving third downs up. You suck at giving up percentages on completion percentage. You suck on the amount of yards quarterbacks get on you. And yet you think you're better than San Francisco secondary. How? Where do you think that? Where is the facts to that? Still, I go slay. Advantage, Philly. So, six for Philly, five for San Francisco. Think about that. You, the 49ers have 10 areas on offensive defense where they have the advantage. And Philadelphia has 12. That's why this game is close. That's why this game is going to be a great football game. Okay? It is. And you have to add the fatigue factor. Now, here's what you do. You turn around and you say this now. Swift, AJ, Devontae, Julio Jones, Dallas Goddard. Who's got a better pass receiving core? McCaffrey, Samuel, Ayuk, Jennings, and Kittle. Who's got the better pass receiving core? You're right. I think it's San Francisco. Back's better. And, and see, the reason why I think it's better, because they do more. Samuel's a running back. He's on jet sweeps. He's a receiver. Same as McCaffrey. You could interchange those guys. I'll take... The San Francisco 49ers pass receiving guys over the Eagles. Offensive line. I don't, you know, all you guys kept telling me Cam Jurgens is some sort of superstar. He's not. Lane's hurt. Um, we'll see what kind of health he has. He'll need it. He'll need it. Still, I would take Philly. Because of Kelsey, Malata, Dickerson, the entire left side. But your entire right side is in question. Lane's health, Jurgen's play, and is Goddard playing? I mean, Cam Jurgens has not impressed me. Actually, I saw one guy, Opeta, play against Aaron Donald. He was great. I, other than that, they've been marginal. Shit, man. The Buffalo Bills were putting – the Chiefs and the Bills were putting massive pressure. And when they lined Chris Jones up on him, he destroyed him. Now that's the best guy in the sport. <laughs> so you got to be fair there. Quarterback, it's Hurts. That's not a debate. Get this. They're going to try to debate that this week. Who's the better quarterback? Don't bite on it. It's 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 not it's not a debate. Okay. Nasty said Jurgens is closer to good than bad. That's not good enough. That's not good enough when you're lining up over Javon Hardgrave. That's not going to be good enough. Good doesn't get it done. When you're talking about one of the best units in the league. You say whatever you want. 
Front four. Who has the best front four? Young, Armstead, Hardgrave, Boza. Sweat, Carter, Davis, Graham. It's an, uh, It has to be the two best defensive fronts in the NFL. I mean it. It has to be the two best defensive fronts. I would say that San Francisco is more dominant on the perimeter at the end position, and the Eagles are more dominant inside. But it's not by a lot because Armstead and Hardgrave are outstanding themselves. And the last two weeks, those two defensive tackles have been getting run on. You've been giving up 170 yards in rushing offense the last two weeks. That's a factor. Okay? That's a factor. That's close, man. You got the reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year on the line. Young's playing like he did his rookie year. Hardgrave's having a great season, but Jordan Davis and Carter are dominating inside. Sweat's awful good and underrated. Brandon Graham, I think he's had an okay year. I wouldn't write home about it. Um, man, I, I don't like doing pushes because you got to have an opinion. You guys haven't been getting home a lot. Man. Who would you take? I haven't got to the outside linebackers yet. I'm biased because of the two DTs. I'm going to take the Eagles. I'm going to take the Eagles by a small margin. The 49ers are better on the edges, and you're better in the middle, but Sweat's awful good. Sweat's better than Chase, and you can line up sometimes when you go to that five front, Reddick over at one of the ends. So it kind of, they, they move that around a lot. So I'm going to go Eagles linebacking core. Reddick is the only thing that keeps it kind of banks, Warner Greenlaw versus Ellis Cunningham, Morrow and Reddick. It's San Francisco. Cause Reddick is not better than Fred Warner. Home field benefits the D does here here's here's the problem that you're going to get here with this conversation you don't have a better secondary as a unit than San Francisco does but it's funny that you have the majority of the matchups with player personnel back there the numbers just don't dictate it now i will say this to your side of the conversation and to your remember something here Look at the quarterbacks you've played versus who San Francisco's played. Okay? High-powered, big number, big score, big wide receiver numbers. So don't you think your numbers are going to be a little higher than versus guys that aren't in the Josh Allen, Tua, Dak, Patrick Mahomes, even, even Sam Howe? I mean, who are some of the – name me the quarterbacks that San Francisco has had to deal with. When you deal with Josh Allen, and Josh Allen puts up 400 yards in offense, is that uncommon? No. Is he going to do that against good units? Yes. 
49ers haven't played near the competition that we have played other than the Cowboys. And, 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 and Christopher, that's where I'm going here. So it's a little bit of something that I have to take into consideration are the people you're playing. You know, if you, this is why people don't really kind of dissect it out a little more. Okay. Is because, Hey, you can look at San Francisco statistics in the secondary. Okay. Well, when you're taking Kenny Pickett on and you're taking Josh Allen on or tug of Viola and Dak and those guys and Mahomes and how and Stafford and, you, and Kirk cousins, and you're taking guys like that on, don't you think your secondary numbers are going to be awful high? Didn't you think that that you weren't, you knew coming into this, get this, I'll even make this a comment. Even if you had brought everybody back from a year ago, you still were going to have bigger numbers put on you. Why? Better QBs. Davis Mills or David Mills or whatever, you're not playing against guys like that anymore. You're playing against the elite of elite. All these talented guys. So your numbers are going to be higher. And when you have a conveyor belt of injuries in the secondary, they're going to be catastrophic numbers. And that's why you've played one, one score games or one possession games. Okay. Hey, no, I threw, I threw, I threw Sam Howell in there. Sam Howell's on pace, almost throw for 5,000 yards. Do you know that? I think he's got like 3,500 yards or some shit like that. He's going to be around. That's Eric B Isn't it funny? The guy in Washington may throw for 5,000 yards and the guy in Kansas city may throw for a thousand less than what he did a year ago. I don't know. I mean, you might want to put that out there. Okay. So, you know, when you, when you go, Dan, San Francisco secondary is better. Yeah, well, okay. Statistically, but who you played? I think a lot of that has to do with the scheme more so than personnel, especially when you compare yards given up and points. Dirty D, when you play zone defenses, didn't you see what Josh Allen was doing the entire time? The motion, they're too predictable. But the side can't get fancy because he doesn't have the personnel on the other side to get in disguise coverages. You guys remember, hey, do you guys remember what uh, Baltimore used to do? It was called the bunch huddle. Do you remember the bunch huddle? Everybody would congregate right near the ball. And as soon as the offense got to their positions, the defense would break off and they would go to their spots on what the defense was called. It was called a bunch huddle. And it was developed uh, really by Rex Ryan early on in Baltimore. And it was the bunch huddle. And all those guys, Ed Reed and Ray Lewis, they would sit there and wait. But because you had Deion Sanders and Rod Woodson in the secondary, you could do that shit. And when you got experienced dudes back there that know what they're doing, that can make up mistakes in case they get a quick snap, that's the advantage of having experience back there. And they would break off and they would go to their respected assignments. Well, you can't do that with that Eagle defense, especially in the secondary. And especially when you put dudes like Sidney Brown out there who are not qualified to play in an NFL defense right now. He doesn't know what he's looking at. You can see it. And it was so simple. Watching, I mean, Buffalo did the simplest things to make you predictable. That's why Allen had a night. They would run that receiver in motion. The guy would stop halfway. You knew immediately they were playing zone. So what did that mean? What did that tell Allen? He knew he could either take off because there'd be no one in the zone. And by the way, some of the times, even when you left a spy on him, he's so big and strong, you're not taking him down with one guy. You're not getting Josh Allen on the ground with Zach Cunningham 
and Nicholas Morrow. Those guys aren't putting him on the ground. There's a reason those guys were waived by their teams. You're not putting him on the ground. Okay? Birds goes, Purdy's not Allen. He's not asked to be Josh Allen. That's why I gave the advantage to Hurts, and it wasn't close. Josh Allen has to do more to win for Buffalo. Purdy doesn't. And Purdy can't win if he doesn't have pieces on the field and in the huddle. Like, if Ayuk leaves, Purdy's a different player, in my opinion. If Christian McCaffrey gets hurt in the Eagle game on Sunday, that game's over. If A.J. Brown gets hurt on Sunday, the Eagles still win. That's what Delaney Johnson, not having him last week, meant to me. I don't believe Brock Purdy can win a ball game without all his pieces on the field. I believe Jalen can. I believe Jalen can. I thought Purdy was Montana. Callie Green, once again, has shit in his ears. He got out to a better start. He's won more games. He's thrown more touchdowns. He's got a higher win percentage. He's got a higher completion percentage than what Montana did in his start. Now, if you think that's Joe Montana, or do you think that that's just a guy getting out to the best start in 49er history, for you to decide and tie it all in like you do probably with your politics, put it all in one sandbox, that's a you thing, dude. Guys can get out to exceptional starts in their careers better than the next guy. That doesn't necessarily mean he's Joe Montana. He's done something that Montana didn't do. He's got out to wins. He's got out to touchdown to interception ratio, which is spectacular. And if you want to tie that in, I thought he was Joe Montana. That's a lazy comment. Nobody said that. And by the way, I still hold to the notion of what I said about Purdy. Purdy's more of an advantage in San Francisco than what Jalen is in Philly. He's more of an advantage. Why? He makes 900 grand. And he's going to make 900 grand for two more years. And if that team gets to a Super Bowl with a quarterback making 900 grand and all you $50 million guys don't get there, you don't need to have a $50 million quarterback to win a Super Bowl, obviously. This is what you're, this is what is going on. Okay. This is what you have going on in San Francisco right now. San Francisco can redefine how you pay that position. So Kyler Murray's getting paid $48 million or 46 one, whatever it is. You're paying Brock Purdy 90. Ooh, Purdy fits that system, right? Okay. I'll take the 900 grand guy. Right? Remember something. You always have to put the money in when you're talking NFL, how he does. You serious? You think Purdy's better than Jimmy G? Um, I, I, I don't think there's enough intel on him. See, I think Jimmy G, Jimmy G has to be in that Niner system or up in like in uh, New England. He needs pieces around him. Don't you see what happened? Exactly what I told you. Kyle Shanahan, that's his offense. They didn't develop Jimmy G. They told Jimmy G what to do. When he went to Las Vegas and they asked him to lead, he couldn't. Josh McDaniel did the same thing in New England with him. He's not going to be a guy to walk into a system and turn your team around. Like, could Brock Purdy go to Arizona and turn them around? I doubt it. I totally doubt it. Lane expected to play Sunday. Fabulous news. 
50 million for a glorified running back? Hollywood, um, I know you're looking to get like, um, you know, people to, you know, say something, but glorified running backs don't beat Dak, Tua, Mahomes, Josh Allen. They don't beat God. Glorified running backs don't beat those dudes. It, 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 it's a preposterous notion to even think that. Six QBs in history have won a Super Bowl on a rookie contract. Wentz, Mahomes, Roethlisberger, Manning, Brady, and Russell Wilson. I don't believe Wentz was on that. Was 17 Wentz's rookie year? I thought it 16 was. I thought 16 was his rookie year with um with golf. Okay. That was his rookie year, 17? Yeah, 16 was his rookie year, not 17. And he didn't close the deal. He was on the team holding holding ice. Okay. Oh, rookie deal. I got it. On rookie deals, not years. Okay. Contract, not year. Got it. You're right. You're right. I got it. Okay. It was a rookie contract. Whew. Man, you get, yeah, but get this. Those guys were first rounders. This guy's the seventh, seventh rounder making 900 grand. Those guys were making. So when you throw that out, you're not telling the full story. Yes, those guys were on rookie deals like he was, but those guys were making $9 million. He's making 900 grand. You 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 got you got backup backup O lineman making more money than Brock Purdy. All right. Appreciate it guys. We really appreciate everybody coming aboard here with our friends at Hooters here. Happy Thanksgiving for the month of November. Do me a favor, make sure you check them out from Rhode Island all the way down to Jersey, all the way down to King of Prussia, man. Got some really great deals. And the Iconic Cooter Girls want you to know that there's a special each and every single day for the month of November, like Cold Coors Light Drafts, $2.99. 25 cents of each purchase will go towards a local charity in the local surrounding areas. The Hooters calendars, man, you're going to absolutely love it when I tell you this. The 2024, I believe there's nine girls, too, from the Hooter locations that are that are profiled in the calendar for 2024. There's $100 in gift cards that are inside the calendar. Go to northeasttutors.com. That's northeasttutors.com. Some great specials. Happy hour, Monday through Friday, four to six. Six bucks, six items. Try the fried pickles. Military Mondays, 20% off all day long for our men and women who served our country. And Wing Wednesdays, 1983, all you can eat. Telling you kids eat for free on Saturday. You'll love it. NortheastTutors.com. That's NortheastTutors.com. And when you roll in, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sill sent you. Here Hooters, the perfect pair.